Okay, so in this one here, what we have is a question very similar to the type of question you will see on D2L, uh, very similar to a type of question that you may end up seeing on this subject matter for, say, a midterm or the like. Uh, in this case here, I'll read it off for us. Uh, we're going to consider the country of Scandia. They have a thousand workers in their labor force. Well, um, Scandia is able to produce manufactured widgets at a rate of two workers per widget, or they're able to produce lumber at a rate of five workers per board foot. So, okay, we have our scarce resource of workers and we have our absolute cost of production. That is how much of that resource we have to give up in order to produce our good or service. So first thing I'd want to do with this question is start to take the big pieces of information available here and write them down separately so that I can access it later. So big pieces of information, uh, what do we have here? We have a thousand workers in the labor force. So let's take that, let's go and get that guy so that we can just refer to that directly. So we have 1000 workers, great. So first bit, don't need to go hunting for that again. Next thing is going to be our costs of production. So Scandia is able to produce manufactured widgets at a rate of two workers per widget. So, okay, let's get that written down here. We have, uh, let's go this way. We'll go two workers. I'm going to use L for laborers per widget. So two workers per widget is what I have for my cost of, and I should have wrote this maybe before it. Let's, let's just erase that and do it again. Let's go cost for widgets was two workers per widget. Okay, there we go. And similarly, I'm going to have my lumber and lumber what is lumber going to be looking at um, we have a cost of lumber at a rate of five workers per board foot so okay again that's going to be five workers per and i'm just going to use b for board foot so i have my big bits of information down now what are my what is my actual question let's graph the ppf for scandia with lumber on the horizontal axes Okay, let's just scroll down a bit here. Let's get some room. Oh, I accidentally deleted that. How did that work? Ah, per board foot. Let's scroll down to make some room. So let's give that a quick draw here. We have our axes. There's my vertical. There's my horizontal. Oh, let's keep that in the actual straight line. There we go. And I have lumber. So lumber, I'm measuring lumber in board feet. So board feet, and I'm measuring widgets in widgets W. In order to finish this production possibility frontier, what I'm going to need to figure out is how many widgets I could produce if I put all 1,000 of these workers into widget production. Very similarly, I need to figure out how many board feet I could produce if I put all my thousand workers into lumber production. So let's go about doing that. And I'm purposely going to mess this up at first because I'm purposely going to make the mistake that I'm sure many of you will end up making. And that is to attack this question in the identical way we attacked the last question. And let me show you what I mean by that. So in that last question we looked at, the way we figured out maximum amount of widgets is we took our number of workers, so 1,000 workers, and we multiplied that by our cost, two workers per widget. And okay, you would work this out and you would say, yeah, that's not bad, that's going to be 2,000 widgets. But no, no, it's actually not 2,000 widgets. Let's, let's look what we've just done here. Let's get rid of that. What we've just done is we've done 1,000 times 2, giving us the 2,000. 
but following the units, right? Remember I said these units are important. We really need to keep track as to what's happening here. Following our units, we've just done L times L. So we have 2000 labor squared per widget. Okay, what were we looking for? We were trying to find the number of widgets that we would be able to produce if we put all of our workers into widget production. That is our final unit of measurement was just supposed to be W. And instead we have this. Well, okay, clearly that's not a solution. So let's back up. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get W by itself. We're trying to get just widgets, which means we need to get labor to cancel out again. Taking a look at this, well, okay, we have two laborers per widget. In order to get rid of our laborer, multiplication doesn't work, so we have to try division. It may pop out to you clearly which way you need to divide this. If so, great. If it doesn't pop out to you right away, well, start just playing around. Start just playing around with the math and just really follow what happens with the units. Let's, uh, let's try this. I'll show you what I mean by this. Let's go and we'll take our thousand workers. And let's say we take our thousand workers and we just go and divide that by our two laborers per worker. So, okay, if we go through this math here, we can kind of separate this. We can cross out on the left hand side, workers cost, the numbers, and on the right hand side are units. If we work this out, well, 1,000 divided by two, that's not too bad. We have 500. But what do we have for units? We have laborer per laborer per widget. That's a really awkward unit of measurement. How, how do we do this? Well, our trick here, anytime you have something being divided by a fraction, our trick is, is that you take our denominator and you can flip it and multiply it by the numerator. So what does that mean? That means that what we're gonna get is we're gonna have 500 laborers times widgets per laborer, right? So we had laborer per widget, but instead of dividing by a fraction, we flip and multiply. You'll notice, hey, this is what we want. Labor, labor cancels out and we're left with just 500 widgets. That's our answer, that's what we were looking for. So let's go put that up here. We have, as an extreme here, 500 as the amount of widgets we could produce if we put all 1,000 workers into that production. So what about the other extreme? Well, same idea, instead of looking for widgets, we're looking for board feet. So we just go about it in the exact same way. In fact, we already know how we do this ratio. We're gonna go and do, let's just change my color for the uh, board feet here. We have our thousand workers and we're gonna divide that by five workers per board foot. Working this out, a thousand divided by five, that's gonna leave us with 200 and that's gonna be 200 workers times board foot per worker. Again, our workers, our laborers cancel out, leaving us strictly with 200 board feet. So if we go and put that up here, well, let's say that's somewhere around there, we have 200. We can take this then, we can create our production possibilities frontier by just connecting these two extreme points as such, and we have our production possibilities frontier. Let's see, did we fully answer that first question here? Graph the production possibilities frontier for Scandia with lumber on the horizontal axes. So there we go, lumber is measured in number of board feet. Done, question one is great. What are we looking at next? Question two. Compute the opportunity cost of producing an additional board foot. So, okay, again, an opportunity cost is how much of one we have to give up in order to do an incremental change in the other. So in this case, what we're looking at is how many widgets would I give up for plus one board feet? In this case, because board feet is on the horizontal axis, 
Our slope is rise over run. That is our slope is widgets per board feet. Our slope in this case is just strictly our opportunity cost. So we're gonna have 500 over 200 widgets per board foot. So, okay, five to 200, that's not necessarily clear. That simplifies down to five over two or 2.5 widgets per board foot. In this way here, we say that, okay, every time we wanna produce an extra board foot of lumber, what our trade-off is, what our opportunity cost is, is we have to give up 2.5 widgets. So that is our rate of exchange from widgets to board feet. Similarly, we can work out the next part here. Number three, compute the opportunity cost of another widget. Well, to get the opportunity cost of another widget, we're just going the other way, right? Instead of saying, okay, how many widgets do we lose for an extra board foot? We're looking at how many board feet do I give up to produce an extra widget? So in this case, it's just gonna be the inverse. In this case here, we're just gonna be doing 200 over 500. And again, our units, keeping track of that, they're important. We're gonna have 200 board feet per widget. Sorry, 200 over 500 board feet per widget. That simplifies down. We can work that out to be 0 0.4 board feet per widget. So 0.4 board feet per widget. Every time I wanna make another widget, I have to give up 0.4. Let's see if we can make that look something more like a four. There we go. We have to give up 0.4 board feet for every widget that I wanna make. And we have our opportunity cost for each product. And we have our production possibility frontier drawn with our maximum amounts of production for each. Hopefully you're able to work through and get these same results. If you're having trouble with any of this, if you're having trouble with figuring out what the maximum levels of production are or working out the correct opportunity costs, please feel free to drop me a line. Again, post that on D2L, reach out by email, any way that you have to ask, we can work through this, office hours, etc. cetera. Uh, common, common things that end up happening as we work through this, we get these guys reversed. So for somehow we get 500 board feet and 200 widgets. Other common mistakes is we get our opportunity costs the other way. That is we'll get 2.5 board foot per widget. Well, okay, no, 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 it's 0.4 board foot per widget, but we'll get these reversed. So make sure you follow your units, make sure that, hey, if we're looking for the opportunity cost of board feet, well, board feet is in the denominator. Hope that helps. Again, feel free to drop me a line if you have any follow-up questions.